Hi guys, Wheelight, who is owned by Viltrox, as far as I know. Viltrox Wheelight sent over this Ninja 20, this handsome light, for review for you guys. And this thing, this can do a combination of things that no other light can do, as far as I know, on the market. And hey, it's Friday night, Friday the 13th. Grab your apple juice, we're gonna talk about lights. Dude, things are getting so awesome in the filmmaking world. The YouTube, the social media content explosion. Sure, social media overall ruining the entire world, but in terms of gear that we are getting to film ourselves ruining the entire world, oh, it's getting so good. It's getting this thing. This is very much in like the aperture 120D, the Godox VL150 that I have over here, but this is more than just your regular COB light. First of all, it is a hell of a bargain. This thing is $299 right now, $299, and it is a 200 watt light, which means at one meter with the reflector on, it shoots out about 79 thousand looks. Now, in comparison, my wonderful VL150 from Godox, which I love, is one of my favorite lights, that does, I think, 59,000 lux at one meter with the reflector. So a much more powerful light, and it is actually quite a bit cheaper than the VL150. But that is not the major selling point for this guy. Intrigued? Hopefully I didn't write it in the title. I might have anyway, doesn't matter. Spoiler alert, this thing has a silent fan mode. And anyone who's watched my channel, and if you haven't, please start watching the channel. You know I love silent lights because I've been pointing over here at my kicker light, the Godox VL150. So what is this key light, you may say, or maybe you already know, it is the Godox UL. 150 U for U silent light. That's what that stands for. This is a totally silent light. It has no fan. It has passive cooling. And I love that. That is why I bought it. And there were no other lights on the market at the time that had silent, well, that had no fans in them that were totally silent. They now have a UL60, which is a less powerful version of this guy, which is what I would have picked up if that had been available at the time. But anyway, I digress. This thing, while not silent all the way through to 100%, up to 20%, you can press one button and it goes into silent mode and it is virtually silent. There's a small, just a barely perceptible whirring if you put your ear very close to it, but it is still almost dead silent. And for me and studio work, that's what I like. Even if the mics don't pick up fans, I just don't like them having whirring in the background while I'm trying to make my genius content that is ruining the world through social media. My TikTok dances, I need silence when I'm performing those. Now in my studio here, the silent mode is plenty good for me. I will show you in a demonstration when I have the light actually set up. I am only using the light on about 9% power, so nowhere near needing to turn the fan on. And so I will probably never turn the fan on in this guy unless I want to do maybe some, some product shots or if I'm in a larger room. And, and if that's the case, the, the uh, light will be further away from the microphones anyway. So even that fan noise that you would hear if you were close up, the mics certainly won't pick that up. And the fan noise is not like it's extremely loud. I measured it at about 40 to 42 decibels, which falls in line with my Godox uh, SL60W and also a little bit like the VL150 uh, when the fan kicks in. The VL150, the fan kicks in after about 50% if it's running for a while, and then uh, it's about a similar amount. Now, here's the thing. I have complained in the past about the U... Uh, the, there's so many letters in all of these lights names. The SL60W. Did I say that right the first time? I may not have. The SL60W over here. That uh, The fan noise, while similar amount of decibels, it's a much more different sound. And it is harder to uh, remove in post because it kind of changes pitch. And uh, there's a difference in quality 
of the fan noise. This is a very consistent sound that as long as you get some room tone, you can cut that out in post, no problem if you want to. This one I find much harder to cut out. In fact, let me just show you the difference right now. So this is a Daylight Balance 5600 light, which is what I always use in my studios. It has a DMX in, which I didn't expect, but it has it. I didn't need it, but thanks. It has a very usable app, which connects through Bluetooth. You can just control the power of the light, turn it on and off. And also you can use the six built-in effects, which I will never use. It has a CRI of 95, a TLCI of 97, which you, you gotta have color accurate lights these days. There's no excuse if, uh, if a light is not color accurate, just don't buy it. There's lots of good options on the market to make you look nice and gorgeous like myself, uh, like the Wii light here or the Godox or the Aperture. There's good ones out there. I just realized one of my lights died in the background. I gotta get this guy in the studio stat, even though that was a NPF battery that I forgot to charge. That one's on me, that's on me. It's just got two knobs on the back and a few buttons, very easy to use the fan on and off, the effects, you can use that and then you can tweak the effects with the knobs and then CCT, just the power, the set is for the DMX and power on and off. I think you would know what that is, but that is leads me to my first drawback of this light because you can't expect the world for $299 of a 200 watt light that also has a silent mode. There's gonna be some drawbacks and uh, one of them is that the buttons on the back are just little, I don't know, rubber buttons that look to me they're like old remote control buttons where I know those letters are gonna wear off eventually. It's still not gonna be a big deal. You know, you're gonna know what the buttons do anyway, but still, I would much prefer to not have these buttons that probably the words will wear off in time. And uh, other things I don't like are right here. The cord that comes with it that leads to the power brick is quite flimsy. It's very, uh, very thin. I would like to see a more rugged cord. And all the controls are on the light itself, which does eliminate one brick that comes with a lot of these types of lights, like right here. It's, uh, it's a little control panel that comes attached to the power brick of the UL150, VL, and uh, Aperture, stuff like that. And this thing is quite useful because you can control the light while you stay here in front of the light. You just hang it there off your light stand and it's fine. And that way you don't have to get up and go around to the back of the light when you want to change settings. Of course, you can use the app for this, but maybe you don't have access to the app at the time or you just wanna make a quick adjustment. It's nice to have something like this, but again, you know, you can't expect it all when you're getting this type of bargain. Because the build quality is fantastic. It's mostly metal here. It's got like a metal yoke with one of the nice tightening teeth grips. Oh, it's just very sturdy, very well built. I have no doubt that this will stand up to a little bit of abuse. Uh, the cord, I doubt, but the actual light itself, very much. And here's another thing, it's a little thing, but the cord is a three-pronged cord, and I like the two-pronged cords. It takes up less room on my power bars, and it's also when you're using extension cables. Sometimes, you know, the extension cable doesn't have the three-prong extension, it's just the two, and uh, my Godox lights all use two prongs. It's just, I, f I find it a little bit better. That's a minor gripe. I should strike that from the record, Your Honor. But anyway, let's hook up my softbox to this bad boy so we can see him in action. So here we are looking gorgeous with the Ninja 20 setup with my regular softbox. And I have this on silent mode, as you may have noticed. I like it when my lights are silent and I am at 9%. So the light is about, I don't know, a foot and a half away from me, just off screen right here and at 9%. So I can go a whole lot more before I get to that 20% cutoff where I have to actually kick the fan in. And uh, look, let's just see, here's here's going to the full 20%. Look at that. And, you know, and I'm on, I'm using S-Log3 and I'm exposing to the right and I'm not using the super low aperture of 1.4 that I could on this lens because I'm fancy. I have a fancy lens 
on this camera. I'm using it at F2. That's what I normally use in the studio. So I will put this back down to uh, 9%, which is my ultimate handsomeness according to my zebras, the way I have it set up with my Paul Leeming love. But basically, in a nutshell, I use a fair amount of light in my studio, but this thing is so powerful that at 9%, nowhere near the fan cutoff, huh? This is why this thing is gonna stay, because for the most part, I'm gonna be using this with fan off. And for the times when I need a super powerful light, I have it with a fan noise that I can certainly tolerate and I can cut out in post if I want, because it's a very consistent fan noise. So let me show you the app while we're at it here. There's actually two, as you can see here on the screen. There's WeLight and WeLight Pro. Now they say to do the WeLight Pro in the instruction manual. So I will show you that here and I'm already set up because right here uh, you see the A, B, C, D, E, F. You can set up different groups. I had these cool little Wii lights, which I love and I raved about in uh, their, their like um, little aperture MC type lights and uh, RGB can change color. So I use that app for these and I set them up. But for this, you can just, uh, the, you just go into the CCT here and there's, say, there's my 9%. Now, when you go up past 20, since I have the fan off, nothing is going to happen. So uh, right there, I'll stay at 9%. Now, if I had the fan engaged, have it turned on, it could go all the way up to 100%. And let's see what that looks like. And I'll turn the fan off. Okay, now the fan's on. We're still at 9%. Can you hear it? So let's go up from 9% to, oh my, 30, 45, 50. My eyeballs have melted. We're at 78, 100, it's 100 right here. So if you need this type of light, you just go, you go right ahead. We lights got you covered. I do wish there was a way to turn off and on the fan in the app. You have to actually get up, press the button for the fan on and off, which is too bad. But let me show you the other app here. This is uh, the other we light app. Oh, I have it on the scene mode. No, 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 because then that'll do all the flashing. Oh, now power powers go down to 9% again. No, that's 10. Oh God, this is such a professional review. 9%, now we're on 9%. I find this one is a little easier to use with this light. Anyway, you can use either app. You know, it's very intuitive, very easy to use both of them. And uh, the scene that I was just on, that has the different effects if you want to do those effects and I will list them on the screen now. There are six effects that I will never use, but maybe you will and here they are. I'm not gonna demonstrate them because maybe out there you'll have a bunch of seizures and then you'll blame me and rightfully so, so I don't want to do that. Plus, I'm lazy. So for $2.99, you get all that versatility. You get that silent mode up to 20%, which is plenty for me when I'm in my little studio. So that's why this guy is going to join the stable of my Godox UL150. And now if you have the money, I would probably do the Godox UL150 because that stays silent right up unto 100%. Now it isn't as powerful of a light as this guy. So if you need that extra little bit of power, then this is still cheaper and more powerful. But I just like the option of the UL150 to be silent all the way up to 100%. But this guy, this, he's going to join. He's joining in the ranks and very glad to have him. So thanks to WeLight for sending it over for review and um, definitely something that I will be using going forward. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, you know, give me a little comment uh, question. If you got one, I'll, I'll be sure to answer it. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye. I still can't see a thing.